Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Jason Salyer. Today we're going to discuss sharpening a knife. There's going to come a time, regardless of what your knife is made out of, however high quality the steel may be, eventually it's going to need some touching up. And I'm going to show you the way that I do it. It's very, very simple. And this is my favorite sharpening stone right here. This is from Fall Niven. I want to say it's like a DC-1, something like that. Don't quote me on that, but I want to say that's what it's called. Um, but basically, it's got a diamond side, and then it's got a ceramic side. This is going to remove some material um, to help sharpen your knife, and then this side here is going to polish it and hone it to a razor-sharp edge. This is by far my favorite sharpener, and this honestly is really the only thing that I use. I use this on all my knives. I use it on axes. Obviously, if I get like a ding in an axe or something like that, I'll take a file to it, but... For the most part, I use this on everything. This is all you will ever really need. Um, and I'll show you my method, my technique of doing it. The easiest knife that I have to show you to kind of give you an example of how to do this is on this Scandinavian type grind knife, this uh, more companion. I don't even think this is a companion. I've had this for, man, 15 years, maybe more. So this was probably before the companion. I don't know what they used to call it, but it's basically the same thing. Um, it's a stainless steel version of it um, because I'm gonna be in some salt water activities. And as you know, carbon steel and salt water don't go very well together. But anywho, so sharpening, what I wanna do is just, I wanna match the, the angle of the grind to my stone. And what you can do is if you get really close here, make sure we get focused in on that. You wanna be in a really well lit area. Outside is almost always the best place to sharpen a knife. So you can really see when the blade edge itself comes in contact with the stone. Because when I, what you can see there is a space between the cutting edge and the stone, because I've got the knife laying flat on it. But when I rotate, roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it, you can see a point where the blade edge, the actual cutting edge meets the stone. And that is the angle that I wanna maintain. It doesn't have to be a Scandinavian knife to do that. Every, every knife is going to be sharpened essentially the same way. You just got to make sure that you close up that space and maintain that angle while you're sharpening the knife. And now from here, once I've got that, that angle figured out, what I typically do is put my thumb on the edge of the knife here on the blade. And what I'll do is I'll actually move the stone. I don't move the blade. I'll move the stone in this circular kind of motion. And what that does for me is it allows me to maintain that angle. It allows me to see that space, if there's a space created, if I lose that angle, it allows me to see that. If I'm moving the knife like this and not the stone, I can't really tell. If things are happening, I can't see what's happening with that, with that angle. But if I have it here and I move the stone, I can maintain that angle really, really well. And basically what I'll do is I'll take my time and I'll go very slowly nice and smooth, and I'll work my way up the blade. The curved parts of the blades are a little bit trickier to maintain that angle, but if you take your time and just go slow with it, it's not that bad. And I'll just go in nice smooth circles, trying to keep the knife relatively still. And I'll do it equal times, equal amount of time, not necessarily strokes, you can count the strokes if you want to, but. I just spend about the same amount of time on both sides. And here, I turn it the same way. I, I'm not very good, I can't, I'm not very good at sharpening with both hands. I, I'm a left-handed guy, so I just keep it in the same hand and I just change the, um, change the side here and I just look down the front of the knife and do the same thing. Make sure there's no one around you that's gonna bump into you when you're doing this. Get your eye poked out. But I just move the stone Nice and smooth, making sure the angle stays the same. And then once I feel like I've gotten any nicks or burrs or anything like that off of my blade edge, I'll probably spend, well, depending on how dull the knife is, obviously, if you keep your knife relatively sharp, it won't take you very long to do. But if you've got it pretty dull, you hit something hard, a piece of metal or something like that, or a piece of, or a rock, um, you might just spend a few more minutes on it. But you can look down that edge and you can see really any like nick or ding in the cutting edge is gonna stand out. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but I can see it. There's a couple little spots right here and there's one little mm -hmm. spot right here that I can see needs a little bit of attention. I mean, it's, it's functionally sharp as is, 
but um, if I spent a little bit more time on it, I could get it perfect if I was so inclined to do so. But once I've got all those nicks and imperfections out of the cutting edge, what I'll do is I'll take it over to the ceramic side and I'll do exactly the same thing and I'll polish that edge. I'll polish that edge to a shine and that is gonna give me that razor sharp finish. And there's one thing that I do towards the end after I've polished this, this angle, this bevel from top to bottom and I get it good and shiny the way I want. You can see the parts that I haven't, that are, have been polished as opposed to the parts that I've hit with the, um, just the diamond side. It's got a more dull, abrasive look to it. So you can kind of check and make sure you're doing everything correctly just by looking at the polish. But once I've got that done, and I feel like I've got a pretty good edge, what I do to test it is I just take my thumbnail. You can, I do a couple different things, actually. I'll take my thumbnail, and I'll put the edge at a 90-degree angle on my thumbnail. And if it feels tacky, if it feels kind of, I guess, sticky, like it doesn't want to slide across my fingernail, then I know that I've done a good job and I've got a pretty awesome edge there. But if it slides smoothly across my nail with no real resistance, it's not trying to scrape the nail, then I know that I need a little bit more work in that specific spot. This is a pretty sharp knife, as is. Um, and I could probably, just on the hair on my leg, I could test it to see if I've got it razor sharp, which is generally how I like to make my knives. It is shaving the hair, not amazingly, but it is shaving it. So the one thing that I'll do that may be frowned upon by some people, but it doesn't really matter because either your knife is sharp or it's not sharp, it either works or it doesn't work. Um, since I've, I've maintained that angle of this Scandi grind as I've been polishing my knife, what I'll do as I get um, towards the end, the last few strokes, what I'll do is I'll take the knife and I'll go just a little bit beyond that Scandi grind and I'm not removing any material because I'm using that ceramic side. So don't get, in a, don't get in a hissy fit saying that I'm changing the angle and changing the grind angle. It's not truly a Scandinavian grind anymore. No, it's, that's not happening. All I'm doing is I turn it just past what I've, that, that Scandinavian grind, that factory grind. I turn it just past it and I'll do a few strokes just to kind of straighten out those, um, any burrs that might have been left from the sharpening process. I'll just a few, very light, I'm not pushing hard at all. I'm not removing any metal. All I'm doing is just kind of trying to align all of those little tiny microscopic burrs on the edge of my knife and get it, get it lined up so it gets to a razor's edge. And what you'll see after I do this, just a few, no pressure, not, I'm not pushing on this at all, just very gently. Maybe five swipes on each side a couple times, maybe 10 total. You'll see that now after I've done that, it is, like really sharp and that's all I did was change that angle just a little bit and just straighten out those microscopic little burrs on the edge of my knife and now this thing is a razor and it's really really sharp <laughs> so my wife pointed out the scar on my leg from from a really really sharp axe it's not from that knife <laughs> not from this <laughs> knife no no that's a that was a bad one anyway um now if you're uncomfortable holding a um a stone in your hand like this and working it for understandably that you feel like you might cut your cut your fingers um not a big deal um what you can do is if you're in the field you can use a log like this i've done this before Usually I just put it in my hand, but what I'll do is I'll put it on the log and I'll mark the edge of my stone. Mark the edge of my stone like that. And then I'll just flatten out a spot. A baton would actually work good for this. Let me grab one. So what I'll do is I'll just take my baton here and chisel myself out a flat spot. Being serious, bud. Come on. Of all the places that you could whack stuff, this is this is where you're doing it. Oh, gosh, uh, it to be 
Well, buddy, go whack something else. Mm. Shoot. Anywhere else would be fine. Honestly. The good people watching this video might want to do it without the whacking noises in the background. So when I put my stone in here, it doesn't move around on me. See that? I could do the same thing on the sides if I wanted to, but, but that's probably going to work. And now what I can do, I'll flip it over because I don't need to sharpen that so I don't need to remove any more material. But basically what I can do is I can use both hands and I can find that angle. And with a Scandi grind, it's real easy because when you flip it, you can feel it kind of just boom. And it, it will kind of rests on that flat edge, that flat grind. And I can just push it through here. I can use both hands to maintain that angle. And then you don't have to worry about your hand getting cut or fingers getting cut or anything like that, if you were worried about that. I think it's easier just to hold it, but some people prefer this method. The key with any, just like with anything else, patience is the key here. Not trying to do too much too fast. Just taking your time until you get the uh, desired result, which is a razor sharp knife like this. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure you hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you on the next video. Bye.